Hey, it's Dave here from systemhub.com. And in this video, we're gonna look at our system for creating systems. It's uh, one of the most critical systems within a business. Now, I'm gonna talk in terms of saving that system in System Hub, but it really doesn't matter what platform you're using. As long as you've got somewhere where you're housing your business's systems and processes and have it somewhere centrally located so lots of team members can access them when they need them. Uh, because what you want to do is document the way that you do what you do. That's the most valuable asset within your business. Now, this particular system that I'm sharing is the way for you to extract that IP from a team member. How do we document it and then how do we optimize that? Now, the goal is if any team member follows this system, they can replicate different tasks within their role. And uh, I want this system to be the best example of itself. So you can follow the way the overview is done. You can look at the structure, the formatting. And if you created systems following this standard, you'll have a, the same look and feel throughout your entire organization and makes it very easy for team members to pick up and run with. Now, I believe it's the responsibility of every team member within an organization to be documenting what they do, looking to improve and even teach and delegate those responsibilities down to other team members. That's how a business improves and the efficiency gets better. That's how team members can grow onto higher levels of duties and tasks and move up in an organization. So it really should be the cornerstone of a business. Now, if we jump into the steps here, we're just gonna run through all of the steps and I'm gonna explain the bullet points as well and just give you a little bit of uh, further information. So the first thing is, um, step one, you need to identify the result that you're looking to deliver or have that system deliver. So if you are looking to create a system for baking a cake, um, the, the result is a perfectly baked cake. You just wanna think about that up front because it'll just make a lot of the future steps very easy because that always aligns us to the objective of what we're looking to do. Now step two is you need to identify who's gonna be the best person to produce that result within your organization. Now that might be you, it might be someone else, you might hire an external consultant or work with an expert, um, whoever it is, we just need to identify who that person is. Then step three, we need to determine the best method of capture for that process. Now, it does depend on the process. If it's something that's online, screen capture software works incredibly well. If it's offline, you know, maybe it's something like uh, opening up a store or fixing uh, a particular piece of machinery or whatever it may be that's going on in your business, you may need to do normal video recording. Uh, or maybe it's auto recording, or if you're working with some sort of external consultant or expert, maybe you do it through the means of an interview. Uh, we just need to identify what is going to be the easiest way for the person uh, who is the expert at doing that particular uh, process and getting that particular result so that they can, next time they do it, we can actually be there with them and have them document it and capture that. So it's, it's ideal, I think, if when the task is being done, that's usually, we think, one of the best times to actually capture it. If the person talks through what it is that they're doing it, as they're doing it, and why, it makes it very easy to teach. Now, step four is we need to record that task being done. So if required, and you're working with someone else, you're gonna have to organize a time to get that process recorded. I wouldn't have it heavily scripted or, you know, you might have some bullet points planned out, but you don't want to over script this and make it a, a beautiful uh, video. The, the aim here is to capture it raw as it's happen, happening and um, even if mistakes happen, just keep recording and explain how those mistakes happened, why they happened and fix it on the fly. So that becomes a really great learning tool and will aid in the creation of the system. We just wanna make that capturing as easy as possible. Then step five is that video file needs to be uploaded somewhere. Now, either it's a video file and it would need to be uploaded to a video service like Wistia, Vimeo, Vidla. You could even create a YouTube account, a free YouTube account, and upload that video as a private video or onto some sort of uh, file sharing service. If it's an audio interview, then you probably would upload that to something like a Dropbox or Google Drive. You just need to get it somewhere. The next thing that we need to do is create the system inside System Hub and determine the best location. 
Now I am gonna go ahead and come up here and we'll just open this in a new window so I can actually give you a demonstration as we go. And we'll just come back to our system down here. So you need to identify the best location. Now, we suggest that you break your business up into different departments, things like sales, finance, operations, and then you can use subfolders as needed to help further sort. So if you see our business here, we've broken up things like human resources and we break it into recruitment and onboarding and team leave and things like that. Or, or maybe we look inside our delivery system, okay? Well, then we break up some of our SEO services and individual services. So you just wanna break your business up into all of the different departments. Now, it's a good idea to keep uh, system names simple, clear, and concise, and use keywords so people can find them when they're actually looking for them. And then when you create the system itself, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new system here, and we'll just call it test. And we'll load that in here. And we suggest that you start off with an overview, which talks about what the system achieves. We, we, we talked about that right at the start. You can post a link if you've got a video um, or some sort of audio attachment, you update that. Uh, you can also add any sort of supporting notes that might help to further explain that system. And then we just need to assign it to the person who is actually gonna take ownership of the system and someone who is going to back that person up and then if we need to assign any other team members uh, who can help with that system development, we can. And then we set the status to reflect the stage in which the system is up to. And then we just need to notify someone saying, hey, this system is now created and we need someone to hop in here and create the step-by-step -step documentation. So the way that that would work inside System Hub, now I'm just gonna do a little bit of copy and pasting and we'll just copy from our system for creating systems so you would you know, you might type in your um, your overview here. So I would just go, you know, here is the result we're looking to create. Then we would come down to the video that we've uh, recorded. I would just upload that and drop that straight in here. And once that has loaded, We'd scroll down here, if there were any additional supporting notes, we would just add them in here and we'd say, you might also want to watch and check out this system. So we'll just copy that. And we'll come down here. We might add some tags if you wanted. Um, so we might just call this one SOPs. Now, in the system for creating systems we were just looking at, it was talking about creating a primary owner. Now I'm not gonna create this system, so I'm gonna assign it to one of my team members, my PA. I'll make myself the secondary owner because I want to review it. And I also want uh, Melissa to have a look as well. So we'll add her as an assigned person. Now, now that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. And what I'm actually going to do is one other thing we'll do. They'll get a little notification, but I can also notify them by clicking this button here and just said, do you want to notify all of the owners that you've made an update? So let's say yes. And we could even come down here and we'll add a note saying, um, hey, Stevie, um, I'm going to pop in just this is a test. So she knows. Um, can you please document this system following the system for creating systems? Now, as the business owner or expert, my work is now done. That team member can now be uh, take responsibility for actually creating the system. So step seven is where that new team member would step in and they would create the step-by-step -step documentation. So. Um, it's to be done by the new primary owner. They basically watch the video as the task is being done. They'll write out the steps, one, two, three, four, five, all the way through to completion. And then those get saved directly into the smart operating procedure section. So while looking at my system here, that would just be here, step one, step two, step three, and so on. Now you would also 
include any additional bullet points, kind of like we've got in this one here, that help to further provide clarification and details. But it should be possible for any team member to come over and just read the main steps and get, uh, without reading the bullet points and still get a good overview of the system. So that's, um, it, it should be basically easy enough for someone to quickly scan through and get a feel for it, and then if they want the more detail, they can. Now, if we move down here, all steps should be clear enough to allow someone with a basic understanding of the subject matter to complete that system. So you want to be careful not to um, epically over-document or under-document. If it's your first time that you're using the system, sometimes just um, writing out the main steps is a good place to start. And then over time, you can evolve and add out those bullet points. When you find out where people are getting stuck, the bullet points can be a great way to help overcome some of those issues moving forward. If there's any sort of email templates or documents, you would want to attach that and have those saved in the same place. And if there's any additional information that needs to be added to the SOP, you can add that underneath the supporting notes. So if we're having a little bit of a look here, at least in System Hub, you can see we've got the video down here. We're actually able to add email templates. So we get add an email template here if the system called for it. You know, and you could even just write, hi, Bob, check this out. Just hit save, and you can obviously do it attachments and things like that. So we'll just come back here. So now that would be done. The next step, step eight, is to review the system next time it's in use. So I'm going to hit publish. Next time that task is done, it's good to uh, review it with fresh eyes and keep the system handy to... Uh, ensure that all of the steps are covered, nothing was missed, and make any improvements uh, needed. Step number seven, oh sorry, step number nine is to then submit uh, that for review and discussion. So once that system owner, the primary system owner is happy, it's a good idea for either a supervisor or to be discussed at a team meeting or to get the secondary owner to have a look. Now I'm going to make one minor tweak here. I forgot to mention as well, you can change the status of this system. I'm gonna put it to orange because it's still under construction and you'll actually notice these little dot here, the colors will update to reflect where the system is up to. So we'll just hit publish and we'll come down here. So yes, it needs to be submitted for review and discussion. Now any reviewers, if they want, they can add comments down the bottom here. So this is looking Great, but please modify step seven. They can add those in and then those uh, changes can be tweaked and added in by the system owner. Uh, once the system is all correct there, the system status can be changed and marked to green and you can actually notify of people uh, that it's ready to use. You can add additional team members. Now, once this is done, it's always good for the system owner to teach someone else. So that's step number 10. Uh, they want to go to who the secondary owner is or another team member who might be doing the task. So in this example, I'll just come back here. In this example, uh, Stevie might come back to me and teach me how to do it or another team member how to do it just to make sure that it was all covered off. Now, of course, if anything happens at this point in time where there's points of confusion or missed points, that's when something additional needs to be added into the system. Um, it's also good, our process for teaching someone how to do something is step one, it's always good to do it with them first. Then step number two, once you've done it once with them, then let them do the task and, and you can um, be there and provide any sort of feedback as they go. And then step number three is you allow them to complete the task on their own, but you give them feedback. And you basically keep letting them do that final step of allowing them to do it and giving them feedback until they're able to complete it perfectly. And then from then, they can run with it. And then we move to step number 11, which is every time that the task is completed, you, you use the system. So you make this part of the, the way that you do things, you embed this into your project management tools, um, you, you let the team know that they should be running the business off checklists and processes and procedures. And at every opportunity using that system, they can review it 
and look to improve it and any other suggestions that team members have. And that is how you build a systems run business. Now, imagine documenting all of your processes and procedures following this particular method. You'd have a great standardized way for documentation throughout your business. It would become the most valuable asset within the business because it would teach um, people, anyone, uh, the way that you do things. This is how you make your business scalable. This is how you start to free yourself from the day-to-day operations. This is how you get other team members to execute tasks within your business flawlessly and to your standard without you having to do it. Every business needs to be a systems run business. Whether or not you're saving your systems in the system hub or not is irrelevant. Um, As long as you've got this somewhere, you, you need to be saving this documentation. Obviously, we're a little bit biased and uh, System Hub is the best solution out there. But if if you're going to try and make it work with Dropbox or something like that, please just get started. I know how valuable this is. I have been where you are and I can tell you now, the way to move through to that next level is to document your core processes and procedures. Of course, if you've got any questions, please reach out to the team at System Hub Or if you want to find out more about System Hub, you can head over to systemhub.com and there's loads more education and training on how to build a business that works without you, a business that is scalable and a business that is extremely valuable to potential investors or buyers.